My name is Jan Bass. I live in Marin County, California, and I'm a BMW fanboy. I bought my first BMW in 2007, and it was a 335, and it was far faster than I, I could handle. Someone suggested I go to the racetrack, and getting really passionate about driving to the track, I met the people at Edge Motor Works. Everyone at the racetrack, not everyone, but close to everyone, if you had a problem, would say, go see the guys at Edge. And uh, I quickly found out why. Their expertise, their care, how welcoming, engaging they are. It was, it was great. It's exactly what someone like me needed. I was graduating to that point where I kind of needed a track car, a dedicated track car. Um, I was out driving what my street car could do. Um, anyway, that's why I met Edge. My 1997 E36 uh, is a resto mod. And it's not, I didn't buy it from the original owner, but close to the original owner. And uh, they had used it as a track car. And, uh, but before that, it was the street car. And, and the cool thing was that the owner taught their daughter and their son how to drive in this car. And when I first met them, they were just digging into the resto mod, like moving it from a track only car or predominantly a track car into a predominantly a, a street car. And uh, it was gorgeous. I, I love the, the LTW wing. I know I'm a little old to like that kind of stuff, but I like it. And uh, they were trailer, trailering it from San Luis Obispo to Edge Motor Works in Mountain View, which is around a three hour trip on a good day in California. And uh, that says a lot about Edge Motor Works, the fact that someone would go through that trouble to get their E36 worked on. So uh, what they were doing was to make sure that all the underpinnings, everything around the chassis, uh, everything vital in the motor, heads, cooling system, everything that aged just because it was made in 1997 was replaced. So have you ever had that friendship? The kind of friendship where you haven't seen your buddy in a long time and you finally get back together for drinks to catch you up on old times. And at first it's a little awkward, but then you kind of start kind of like vibing again. Your jokes start to make both of you laugh and you just kind of pick up where you left off. That is how this car makes me feel. Now, I've been lucky enough to drive a lot of E36 M3s in my day, but it's been so long. And back then, most of them were completely bone stock, which good luck finding that today. If you do, it's probably in somebody's collection somewhere. But what I can tell you is this one, not stock, but really well sorted. And man, it just takes me back. I, I feel like I have been transported back to those late 90s, early 2000s. And back then, I remember being in college with my best friend, and there was this one guy who had a black one. And every time he drove by us on campus while we were walking to class, I just, I just said this to myself, if I can only have a car like that, I'd be somebody. Of course, this was young Nick back in the day kind of thinking this way and uh you know it obviously I, I never actually got an e36 up three but i got other cars but what's interesting is this car represented something to me it represented a time when this was the pinnacle of cool for me and anybody who drove one it was like what do you do for a living and how do i do that too so let's check off just the inputs of the car. I think that's the easiest thing to talk about. First things first, this car has hydraulic steering, old school hydraulic steering with a pretty sharp rack. So guess what? This thing turns really well, um, but the feedback, the communication from the, from the tires, I, 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 I'm telling you guys, I can feel what the tires are doing because they're literally texting me right now. They're saying, Nick, we're gonna hit that apex right there. 
and it just gives me confidence in the car. And I, I will say this, if you are maybe a little younger and never really driven anything with a hydraulic rack, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because it will ruin you for modern cars. You just, you just won't like it nearly as much. The next thing, the brakes. This has been upgraded, as you know. Uh, it's got new pads, new calipers, new stainless steel lines and oil. This thing brakes really well. The chassis welcomes that modification and a huge upgrade over the stock brakes of any E36. So though having a you know bone stock car might be good for resale value, if you actually wanna drive it, enjoy it, you definitely need to do some stuff to your brakes to make it uh, worthwhile because this chassis and this engine has a lot more to give than those brakes can handle. The suspension and chassis itself, man, I, I mean, you can just tell that somebody who knows what they're doing tuned this. Not only is the suspension upgraded, right, with some aftermarket parts, just typical springs and strocks and struts, but it's been corner balanced. And that little bit at the end is a key differentiator because that takes your car from just being a lowered car with you know stiffer suspension to actually being more compliant and actually hold better grip through corners because it's taking the driver's body weight into account. So you're actually flatter through these corners, which keeps the contact patch of the tire flatter for longer in the corner, which gives you better grip. It's all science, guys. And I'm telling you, it's worth doing. Okay, let's talk about the shifter for a second. I am thrilled that this is a manual and not an automatic. The automatics in this particular body style were not they just, I mean, they were automatics. They just weren't very good and they didn't really have a lot to offer you. So really, really happy. This is a manual. It's a five speed. The ratios are relatively short, but the throw, it feels like a positive throw. It, it, it's, it's welcoming that next gear and it kind of hints to a little bit of resistance to not going to a, the gear that it thinks you're going to go into, if that makes sense. So if I'm in Right now I'm in third. If I want to go into fourth, it welcomes fourth, but it I could tell it wouldn't want me to go into second. The way you remedy that, you just blip shift it and then it changes its attitude. And then the second gear becomes the welcomed gear. That's what's so brilliant about this car. It just wants to be driven kind of like a race car. And man, I... I just don't know a lot of cars that feel this good. You know, it's no wonder that people take these things to the racetrack, even today, and really just beat the snot out of them and get so much pleasure out of it while killing lap times, beating cars that are well above its, its price point, and I mean, honestly, even putting some modern cars to shame. Basic modification, so an E36 M3 will just transform this chassis into something, somewhat of a weapon for the racetrack. This car feels like it's it's on that razor's edge. It could be a street car or it could be a track weapon. It's just, oh God, it's right there. Okay, aftermarket parts, it's, it's, good. it's a long list. I don't know if I can remember them all. Let's start with suspension. TC Klein coilovers, they're single adjustables. Um, they're brand new with a lower spring rate than typically comes with them for the street. Uh, there's 1995 top hats in the front, which when you put them on a 97, do something with them, you get two and a half degrees of negative camber, which is fantastic. In the back I have SRP camber arms, so we can adjust the camber there. It's almost a, it's around 2.1 degrees of negative camber on the back and 2.5 on the front. The car has been lowered and corner balanced, so it has that kind of BMW thing where it looks a little too low in the back. And uh, for the wheels and brakes, I have Apex SM10s, they're 18 inch, 18 by nines, with 
uh, Michelin uh, Pilot 4S's. And the brakes are the Rally Road conversion for the Porsche slash Brembo brake adaption. And the brake pads, I don't know, kind of a dual duty pad. They're fine on the street. They don't make noise really to speak of. And if I want to ever go on the track, they'll be fine. Um, it has, uh, for the brakes also, it all also has hard lines, stainless steel lines. And um, I think that's it for the suspension. For the motor, there's not a lot. It has an AFE intake. Took the shark tune off it uh, so we could smog the car and beyond all the brand new bits, it has a cat back dyno and exhaust. And that's it. Is the E36 M3 a special car? I think that's a good question to ask at this point. Well, for me, I think it is. I'm gonna give you my five reasons to why that's the case. The first one is performance. This is a car that will surprise you with the power of the motor. I mean, it, it's pretty torquey for what it is, and it does like to rev. So, you know, just from that standpoint, it's an enjoyable experience. When you combine that with the fact that the chassis is really compliant, it enjoys to be thrown into a corner, and it provides a lot of connectivity and feedback to the driver, really makes it a unique proposition for a drive enthusiast. The second reason is livability. I mean, this is a car that if it was your only vehicle, you'd be fine. I mean, it's got a back seat for adults, it has a pretty good sized trunk, and really the car itself is a pretty good size. I mean, it's not a huge car, but that means you can put it anywhere, you can park it anywhere, you can fit it into places where cars today would actually struggle with. The next reason, these things are dead reliable. And I think reliability is always something that people question, but you know, old BMWs, sure, there's a hit and miss sort of um, ratio there, but the E36 M3 is definitely a hit. I mean, these S52s and S50s have proven themselves with hundreds of thousands of miles behind them, most of those on road, but of course, a lot of people track these things. And as long as you maintain them and you pair yourself with a, a great uh, independent mechanic shop like Edge Motorworks in Fremont, then you really have nothing to fear. You just gotta make sure to take care of stuff when they need to be taken care of and use quality parts and have somebody who's very well versed in the world of BMW and that's exactly what Edge does. So from that perspective, no fear there. Next, this one's a little subjective, but the looks of the car. I mean, I think it's actually aged well. I know that it's not for everybody, and of course, some people have different opinions, but I actually think the E36 M3 is kind of understated, and I like that it's kind of under the radar. But you can tune it up if you want to with the aftermarket. So for me, I really do like the looks. And the last point, and maybe one of the most important points, is the pricing. You can find an E36 M3 these days anywhere from 10 grand all the way to $100,000. That spectrum is really defined by the condition, the trim, the mileage, all of that stuff. But what that really tells you is that there's an E36 M3 out there for everybody who wants one, regardless of budget. And at the end of the day, any car that puts a smile on your face and causes you to turn back and look at it once you've parked it, isn't that the point of enjoying driving? And that's why I love the E36 M3. I'm glad it exists. I'm glad it's not ridiculously valuable like an E30 M3 where you gotta be super precious with it. And ultimately, it's a fun driving experience. So with that guys, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. If there's any questions, please put them down below. And of course, as always, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill there. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.